In this unit, we are going to learn what raster data is and what are some of the operations that we perform in hydrologic applications. A raster data set in its simplest form is a matrix of cells organized in rows and columns. So what you see here are columns and these are the rows and raster data set is also identified by its cell size. So cell size here represents this x distance for each of this grid cell and then this is the y. Most of the times these cells are in square shape which means x and y is equal but sometimes you may find data sets where x and y are different. So there are few pieces of information that defines a raster data set. First is the number of rows and columns. So this defines the spatial extent of a raster data set and its cell size. Sometimes the cell size is also referred as grid size or more commonly spatial resolution or specifically horizontal spatial resolution. A horizontal spatial resolution of 30 meter means that the X and Y size of each cell in that raster data set is 30 meter. Now depending on what kind of information that we store in a raster data set, you can have a raster data set in continuous form or in discrete form or sometimes we also call it as a thematic surface. So a continuous surface is a raster data set that may be representing uh, elevation data which means that the elevation is not constant, it is changing same temperature or precipitation or any variable that is changing in space and that is not constant over a long spatial domain that is a continuous data set. In a thematic data set, sometimes things don't change over a certain region. So in this case, what we are seeing here is land use data set. So if we think of land use, you will find that there are certain areas where there is only agricultural fields. There are certain areas where you will find only houses and other types of buildings. So in that case, what we have here are colors representing those distinct themes or land use types. So depending on whether you are using a continuous data set or a discrete or thematic data set, you can also have different types of symbology. So this is a stretched symbology that is used to represent this continuous digital elevation model, which is a elevation surface. And then what we have here is unique values representing each theme in this land use data set. Raster data set comes in different file formats. You see some commonly used formats here. There may be other formats which you may find. IMG is proprietary format. So IMG again, it's a short form of image. So any picture that we use in pixels is an image, is a raster data set. ASCII, ASC dot ASC stands for ASCII format. So this is a non-proprietary format. It can be used in any GIS application. So this is basically a text file that will give you values for the number of rows and columns and then a value for each cell. The next non-proprietary format is .tiff format. Again, this can be used in any application. Grid format is proprietary to ESRI or ArcGIS. So if you create a new raster, you can store it in grid format in ArcGIS, but then you can only open it in ArcGIS. So this is a proprietary format. There, these are some of the non-proprietary formats .bil, .bip, .bsq. So these are mostly used for remotely sensed images. These are some of the operations that we do on raster data sets in hydrology, mosaicing, resampling, clipping, reclassification, 
raster calculations and extracting values for a specified geometry. So let's briefly discuss what each of these mean. Mosaicing is basically combining multiple rasters into a single raster. So as you see on these slides, we have six tiles. We combine these six tiles into a big single data set. So this is called mosaicing. And the tool that we can use in ArcGIS is mosaic to new raster. So when we have to deal with multiple rasters that needs to be combined or mosaic, it is a good practice to first mosaic all those data sets into a single data set and then do any processing. Many times these multiple tiles may overlap with each other so there are options especially in ArcGIS to deal with those overlapping areas so you can either take average of the values for the overlapping areas or you can pick which raster takes precedence over other. Resampling creates a raster with different cell size or spatial resolution. So this is an operation that we usually perform when we don't want to work with the resolution that is available to us. So sometimes you may be dealing with data sets that have a very fine or small spatial resolution and it may be taking up a whole lot of time while processing so in that case you can increase the cell size or decrease the spatial resolution and so for example if you have a raster data set that has a horizontal resolution of 1 meter then you can change it to 10 meter or 30 meter and that will significantly reduce your computational time. The tool that we can use in ArcGIS for resampling is resample. We can also build raster pyramids. So when you use a raster data set in ArcGIS for the first time, you may see a message that says, do you want to build a raster pyramid? What raster pyramid does is it resamples the original raster that we are adding into multiple rasters and these rasters are stored in memory and depending on the scale at which you are looking at the data you may be looking at one of the resampled rasters so let's say the one that you see on the top this is your original data set if you are zoomed out completely you don't really see each individual cell so if i add this raster at that scale then the computer may be taking a lot of memory to add all these cells so instead at that scale you may be okay with this resolution so depending on at what scale you are looking at the program may be adding these resampled raster just to save memory so this is what raster pyramid building is so when you add a new raster in arcgis you may get a message that says do you want to build a pyramid and it is always a good practice to build raster pyramid just to speed up visualization and processing of raster data sets. Another operation that we usually do is clipping. So again, when you get a raster data set and it covers much larger area than you really need, in that case, you can clip that raster. So clipping a raster basically means you get rid of all the other area that you don't need so you can perform a clipping by either using a vector data set in this case a polygon or if you have another raster data set that defines your study area you can use that raster to clip also so the tool that you can use in arcgis is either clip or extract by polygon or mask so this polygon in this case what you see here is a red rectangle or you can use another raster data set to perform this clipping next is reclassification so reclassification changes the value of input raster cells to new values so this is a useful tool especially when you are dealing with thematic data sets so let's think of a land use data set a land use data set may have different categories of a same land use type so for example let's think of an impervious area 
So impervious area includes residential area, it includes commercial land, it will also include parking lot. So instead of having three different land use categories to represent impervious area, you can combine those into one and just call it impervious. So again, this depends on what you are doing with that thematic data set, but it will also depend on whether you want to increase your computational speed by combining some of these themes. So what you see here is a base raster and this is a table where we are telling the program how to combine our themes into new themes. So you can see that we have 20 themes on the left here and we changed those into five. And this is the new raster data set that you see here. The tool that you can use in ArcGIS is reclassify tool. Another useful operation that we perform on raster data sets is using a raster calculator. So as the name says, you can perform different types of calculations on a raster data set. If you have multiple rasters, you can add them, you can subtract them. And this is how raster calculator looks in ArcGIS. And on the right, I'm showing you an example of conditional operation on a raster. So what I have here is a digital elevation model for an area. In a digital elevation model, streams usually have lower elevation. So what I have done here is I have used a conditional operation which says give me cells that have Z or elevation value less than 175 meter. And when I perform that operation, you can see that it gives me this stream that satisfies my query. So the green cells that you see here, they satisfy the query of elevation smaller than 175. So there are multiple operations that you can perform using raster calculator and it's a very useful tool dealing with rasters for hydrologic applications. Finally, we may be interested in extracting values from a raster and these values may be extracted for a certain specific location. So in this case, I have a point and I want to know what the value is at that particular location. So in this case, I have a digital elevation model. So I see that the Z value or the elevation is 175.2. And the tool that you can use in ArcGIS is extract values to points. If you just have one point, you can actually click and find what the elevation is. But if you have multiple points, you can use this extract values to points. Similarly, we can extract values along a line. So in this case, I want to draw a profile or extract the elevation profile along a river cross section. So you can use the interpolate shape tool to see the cross sectional profile for this line. Sometimes we may be interested in getting the average value of a raster within a certain domain. So in this case, I have a polygon here and you can find out what the mean value is, what the maximum value is, what the minimum value is, what the standard deviation of values within that polygon. So there are multiple operations that you can perform when you have a polygon and the tool that you can use is zonal statistics. So these are some of the useful operations that we perform on raster data sets in hydrologic applications. And in the following units, you will learn how to use some of these tools in ArcGIS.